Hi folks, what's instability in the Middle East and in the markets mean to us as investors? It means we need to check our capital allocations and our risk tolerances, and that's what we're covering today in Easy Finances. Welcome back folks. If you're new to the channel, my name's Wes. And we talk about finances on this channel and sometimes get we have a p portfolio that we go over and we will be looking at that a little bit today. There's a lot going on in the Middle East right now, especially with Iran, and that does affect the markets. We've seen some wild swings in, in oil and different stocks. It's a good time to talk about what that means for your portfolio. We'll be using an ETF portfolio, looking at, at that a little bit later in the in the program here. First, I'm gonna talk about capital allocation. So what exactly is capital allocation? Uh, the way I would describe it is it is what assets we hold, where we put our money or allocate it. Money is of course capital. In essence, capital allocation is what you do with your money or capital and where you, you're putting it. That's the allocation part. Uh, risk tolerance then, uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about risk tolerance in reference to your capital allocation. And what risk tolerance is, is how much tolerance you have as an investor to uh, volatile markets or let's say markets that fluctuate quite a bit. And we'll also talk about three categories of investor. The three types I'm going to talk about are aggressive investors, moderate investors, and conservative investors. And finally, of course, we're going to take a look at our ETF portfolio and how to set that up for what type of investor you are. Just pulled up the video portfolio over here. just want to uh, mention is one way to make sure that you as an investor are prepared for unrest is uh, by placing money in different assets. For example, I always advocate having a savings account then having some type of CD ladder those are going to be very stable and uh, they're not going to be fluctuating wildly and, and uh, if you have that as a base then you're not going to have to worry about your investment so much. Then of course the other way that you can make sure that unrest is not going to affect your account so much putting that money in different assets within your portfolio as well and that's what we're going to cover here. So over here in our video portfolio, we have our ETFs only, which is what we're gonna go look at. You see that I have it split up into stock market, which is VTI fund here, the Vanguard total stock market ETF. I have it set up with real estate at 15%, and that is the VNQ ETF. And then I have bonds, and I have total world bonds because I don't want anything that's gonna affect just the United States or one other country being a drawback on my portfolio as well. So I have the world bonds. And those are the different asset classes that we have here. But there is one other one that I would put in there if I was a conservative investor, and that would be gold. GLD is a good ETF for that, if that's something that you were looking at doing. As far as breaking out what aggressive is, moderate, and conservative, the three types that I mentioned, I would say aggressive it is has a high tolerance to large swings in the market. You're not bothered by whether the stock market's going up or down every day you're in it for the long term and you're able to clear your mind and not think about that so much in a moderate investor a moderate investor is going to be someone that has some tolerance to swings in the market but doesn't want it to go wildly up or wildly down you can't really take that that bothers you and makes you want to either pull all your money out or run for the hills as it were and a conservative would be that the person that has no real tolerance for market swings. You don't really want to see your money, you know, ever going down. You know, we're going to talk about that, how, how that affects your portfolio and, and what percentages I would recommend for that type of uh, investor. My portfolio here is set up in an aggressive stance is what I would call it, 70, 15, and 15. So I have 70% of my assets in the stock market. That is aggressive. I would say, if we had to look at it, I would say 60% of stocks are more is going to be pretty aggressive, honestly. And anything 50 to 60% is probably going to be moderate in the market. And then, of course, 40% or lower in the market is going to be a conservative investor. If we look at it in terms of building a pie here, we've got the research tool where we can make pies. Now, if, if, to do that, we can create a new pie, go to funds. So we'll just play with one real quick. We'll pull it up and, and, and play with it. VTI, we want to add that to the basket. We want to add V and Q to the basket. 
B and D W to the basket. We'll say we'll add gold later. Okay, so we make our new pie. Here's what it looks like, right? So what we want to do is go in here. If I was just using these three funds, I would say an aggressive portfolio would be exactly what I have. Maybe maybe a little bit different. Twenty percent real estate and ten percent in bonds. Okay, that's going to be very aggressive. If we're talking about a moderate, maybe I would go 50% in the stock market, 10% real estate, and 40% in bonds. I would say that's pretty moderate. What The thing with bonds are, they don't go up or down a lot. So the more that you have in bonds, the less volatile your account's going to be. Now an extremely conservative person might do something like 40% stocks, 5% in real estate, maybe 50% bonds, and we would add another one for the conservative investor, and that's gold. So GLD, we said we put that in there, and we'll say that we'll put some percentage, either 5 or 5% 5 or so, into uh, gold precious metals, either one. So I'd say that's very conservative. As you can see, it's three very different profiles, but depending on how you feel, you would allocate your money into those different pieces of the pie. That's, this allows you to sleep at night. You won't care about the, the Middle East or any other action that's taking place, anything that's happening with an individual company. If you're using ETFs and you have the proper allocation for your risk tolerance level, you're going to be okay. And you can continue to invest with confidence, and it's important to be able to do that. Like I said, I advocate having a savings account, some CDs, in those different asset categories, if you will. And then setting up your profile with the proper risk tolerance for you. Now, at first, you might have to play around and find out what your risk tolerance is. You know, maybe start out with the, the conservative one here and play with that. And after you've done that for a few months, if, if you're, or maybe even if you have a little amount of money, you start out with the aggressive one. And if you see wild swings and that bothers you, that keeps you up at night, maybe you need to uh, change your allocation. But I think ETFs are a good starting spot to be able to play with that. And when you have a small amount of money starting out, that's the time to do that. So I would I would advocate going with the aggressive stance first, seeing how that affects you. And if you're having anxiety about it, go ahead and switch to a moderate stance. If that if those swings aren't aren't doing well for you, aren't are make it or keeping you up at night, then go ahead and switch to the conservative. You know, I've given you examples here. With that, you'll be able to invest with confidence and you're more likely to stick with investing make money in the long run so it's important to have that confidence in that stance that risk tolerance this is what I recommend for investing and if you have any questions please add them below make sure you like and subscribe as well share these videos with someone else you think could use some advice or would find these things interesting a quick side note here this month M1 Finance is running a special if you sign up via this link you will get $20 and I'll get $20 as you can see here. What better way to make an instant 20% on your $100 sign up? One final note, this is my idea of what these profiles would look like. Feel free to play with those percentages and make something or make a profile that's appropriate for your tolerance level and what you think. I am curious to find out what you think and what you've set up. Please add a comment down below. Thanks for watching.